Okay, I'm going to show you a couple different types of stitches you guys can do with the uh, embroidery or one of the tapestry needles. So embroidery needles are usually a little bit larger um, than the like all-purpose needles I showed you guys in the first video. And so with these, these are less used typically less for like binding stitches or to connect fabric and more for decorative, right? So I have a nice orange string so you guys can see. I'm just going to cut a little bit off and you can see that this is a six strand thread. Now I can pull the threads apart if I don't want it to be that thick. Um, that's kind of up to you. I like working with the six, st six strand thread myself. Something different that you are going to do is that you are going to just tie off the knot first. So instead of what I showed you guys when we did the all purpose needle, where we kind of looped it through the eye of the needle first and then tied them off together, because it's already six strands, we don't need any more than that really. So I'm just gonna create a little knot before I thread my needle at the top. So I'm just gonna take one of these needles here, kind of dampen the, the top of it. Easier to thread now. These, are, these do have bigger eyes, but six strands, to, threading six strands is a little, more difficult than threading just one because you want them all to go through the hole. I'm going to make sure that they're all on the inside. Helps to kind of flatten out the threads so they're all kind of in a line instead of a clump and then you should be good to go. So the challenge here is that I'm going to just hold this thread Pull it down enough to where it doesn't isn't so close. Now as you work it might slip out you just have to re-thread the needle um, but it helps just to have like four to six inches of the thread kind of doubled over and then I have the rest to work with. So this is the shape I had from before. I just pulled it apart so I'm first going to show you how to do a French knot. Um, of course if this was my my good side, the side that I wanted to be in the final presentation of my stuffed thing, um, I'm going to kind of put my knots towards the inside. So when you're thinking about doing decorative embroidery, you can do it once you sew your pieces together, but it'll be a little harder to work through. I recommend kind of doing your embroidery first, or if you're just doing simple embroidery, they do make hooks that are more kind of U-shaped. Um, and so that can kind of get you in and out of the fabric a little easier. But so I'm just going to kind of poke through. I'm going to show you how to do a French knot. So just kind of pull through. So the knot's on the wrong side. Um, and then what I'm going to do with a French knot, these are really easy and they're really fun. I'm going to take my thread at the bottom of my fabric here. I'm going to wrap this around the needle as many times as I want. So you can do like two to three. You can do as many as you want. So I'm just going to kind of wrap this around the needle. I'm going to go close to the same entry point but not quite touching. So you guys can see, I'm gonna go close, but you don't wanna go back through the same hole or else the stitch won't hold. Kind of poke my needle through. Now, just like before when we were tying a knot, I want this close down to the work surface. So I'm gonna take my non-pulling finger, I'm gonna kind of hold close, pull tight, tight, tight. And then you have this little decorative kind of French knot at the top, right? So you can kind of continue to make those going forward. Do another one here. So you make your initial stitch. I'm going to wrap this thread around the needle as many times as you want. Close to the same hole that you just made, but just like right next to it. Kind of string your needle through. Hold down your knot as you pull tight. This kind of clumps them all together and then you have this nice kind of decorative French knot. So of course, if I wanted to just only have two, I just kind of tie this off on the other side. This is why it's gonna to help to have, to do the more like decorative stitching before you sew everything together. You can do it after, it just makes it a little harder. Um, either or, depending on, depending on your preference, right? Just gonna tie that off, cut the excess. And then I'm kind of good to go. So I have two French knots. So that's one technique. Now I'm going to show you a different way of working because this is a kind of free sheet. And with some of the other stitches, similar to how you saw in the other video where the fabric bunches up if you pull too, too taut, how you can prevent that is by using a hoop, right? So I have one of the mid embroidery hoops that I have. You should always have a bottom and a top one. The bottom one's going to be the smaller of the two hoops. So what I'm going to do, I have an extra piece of fabric here. I'm going to put this on the bottom, 
gonna gently place this over the hoop. I'm gonna take my top hoop and just kind of work it over the edge. Now, some you have to have like a little screw here. This just has springs on the side. Um, and then you're good to go. You can see it's more taut like a drum. That's just gonna keep your fabric in place as you're working, which is gonna be helpful if you're doing like satin stitches or some of those longer stitches. So I'm gonna grab my thread again, make my knot like before. Pretty much any stitch that you can do with just like a regular all-purpose needle that you can also do with an embroidery thread, just gonna be a little thicker depending on how many strands you use. Um, but I am gonna show you just a few different ways you can do a straight stitch. So of course, if this is the top of my work surface, I always wanna go through the back. You can do the straight stitch just like before. It's kind of going in, kind of taut up there. Now with the straight stitch, it's like the back stitches like before we kind of left a space, I like to kind of pull it to the side, come up a little bit back from the other stitch before going forward. It's kind of like a back stitch without skipping the step and so you get more of this kind of linked effect. I've also seen some people will go through the threads, so without coming up in the same placement, kind of going through some of the threads and then progressing forward. So there's many different types of ways to kind of stitch a straight stitch with this. So you just really have to play around with it and kind of figure out your own way of working. I know that's sometimes not the best answer, but it's just the honest answer. Um, I'm gonna take some of these out because straight stitching is pretty straightforward, pun intended but I'm gonna show you how to do a satin stitch. And so satin stitches are gonna be really good to kind of fill in a large section of a shape. So if you want something to be a little more decorative. So satin stitches are pretty much straight stitches that are just right next to each other. So for instance, if I wanted to kind of work in a little bit longer of a shape here, you're just gonna do the best you can to make your stitches go right next to each other, right? And so eventually, oh, knocked over my pin cushion. Eventually what I'm going to have is I'm going to have this kind of block or shape of color that I've worked in with thread, right? And so this is why it can be fun to kind of throw these in if you want a little pop of color on the surface of your work or if you're making a design. This can kind of get you some color without necessarily having to commit to like really colored or patterned fabric, right? So satin stitches. Now, the longer you make a satin stitch, the more likely it is to kind of bend. So I'm just gonna kind of go right here. I wouldn't go more than like inch, inch and a half, right? So if you do want something this fill, just know that over time it will kind of loosen up um, and kind of not be as chopped. If you do want something like this, maybe you're breaking the space up into several satin stitches or kind of intermingling them. And that's a great way too to kind of play with building up different colors and kind of playing with color interaction, having two different types of string next to each other and seeing how, you know, the eye kind of creates a third color. So satin stitch is pretty straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and tie this off. It's another reason why it's helpful to do this more decorative stitching before you do the like purposeful stitching and joining things together because you kind of have more control over your work surface when it's not together like this. Right? So the last stitch I'm going to show you is a kind of combination of just like straight stitches and weaving. Prep my thread here. And of course, so I'm going to have a book in the classroom of lots of different embroidery stitches. I'm only showing you a few. That doesn't mean there's only like three or four. There's endless types of stitches. So if you do want to learn something more advanced or just like have a different technique, you're welcome to go through the book and I can show you some other stitches that I know personally. But so I have my thread prepared. Remember always put a knot in the back for this one and you don't have to double your thread all the way, right? I just kind of have this tail at the top so it doesn't pull out through the needle. So I'm gonna make a kind of little five pointed star shape. I'm just gonna come up through the middle first. Kind of make this. I'm gonna go back through the middle or as close to the middle as possible. 
So I'm just kind of making like a little starburst shape. Now with the hoop too, you can always kind of pull your fabric back taut if it starts to kind of loosen up. It will as you work. So making a star shape. Now, of course, till you get the hang of it, you're always welcome to kind of flip your work surface over, see where you're inserting a needle, and guide yourself that way by kind of flipping your work surface over each time. Um, I don't do that as much, just comes down to, to practice and kind of knowing, knowing where your needle's going at all times. So I have my little star shape here. I've gotten some of these threads tangled, so I'm just gonna cut these off. They're just the little scrap threads that I've pulled in. There we go. No harm, no foul. All right, so I've got this shape here. I'm gonna come up through the middle one more time. And this weaving technique is pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna use my needle to kind of go over and under each, each of these in turn. So I'm gonna go over, under, under. I'm gonna go over on the next one. And so I can repeat this all the way around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep kind of pulling these taut as I go around. And what's gonna happen is I'm gonna create this kind of little circle pattern. And so this obviously is gonna use a lot more thread, but might be a cool technique that you guys wanna try out. Let's just go for here. And of course you can kind of keep going. You guys can see that this is starting to build up into a more full shape and it has a very spiral pattern, which is pretty cool. And so this is some, like a nice way to kind of get different types of texture in your work, play around with just like design pattern, anything like that. And so you guys will be asked to do a kind of sewing exercise where you show me that you can do the basic sewing techniques that I taught you, either hand, both hand stitching and machine, or just hand stitching if you're working from home. Um, so when it comes to like doing some of the embroidery techniques, you can choose which ones that you wanna do, but just make sure that like, if you do wanna experiment later on with things that are a little bit more advanced or something that I haven't showed you, that you test that out in that phase, right? Because that's a great way to kind of test out some of the techniques. So I'm just gonna kind of end it there, mainly because I'm out of thread. Kind of pull that through. And you can see that on the back side, I just still have the like five initial lines because I'm basically just weaving, weaving them at the top there. Doing three just to get a little closer. Snip off the excess. And then I still have my little, my little rose pattern at the top, which is pretty cool. Um, traditionally, you'd go all the way out to you kind of have that full circle, but a few techniques you guys can try with the tapestry needle.